Daniel Ricciardo is eager to return to the Formula 1 grid, as we all know, and this could potentially happen earlier than anticipated. The news that Ricciardo is in talks with Alpha Tauri comes at a time when incumbent driver Nick De Vries is facing heightened criticism due to his disappointing start to his first season. And while these two scenarios currently appear to be unrelated, the likelihood of a driver switch mid-season is growing. But while the eagerness is there from the Honey Badger, him going to the sister team of Red Bull might not be as good as it looks from the outside. When Daniel Ricciardo made the decision to leave McLaren, he did so with the intent of securing a different role within Formula 1. He successfully landed a spot with Red Bull as the team's backup driver, and while his 2023 schedule includes substantial promotional work, his role extends beyond marketing. He's been acting as a reserve driver in Australia and Miami using the simulator, and is scheduled to drive the Red Bull at least twice this year in the Pirelli Titus, with his first appearance slated for Silverstone after the British Grand Prix. Though his reserve duties are relatively light, requiring him to be present for only about eight Grand Prix this year under normal circumstances, circumstances, Ricardo provides backup for both Alpha Tauri and the senior team when on site. This dual coverage role is likely the reason he visited Alpha Tauri's Faenza factory for a seat fit prior to Miami, a quiet move intended to avoid the type of speculation that has since unfolded. With the driver of Ricardo's skill both accessible and part of the Red Bull family and current performance levels falling short, it's natural for people to put two and two together. However, it's important to stop for a second and consider Ricardo's own position. Ricardo aims to return to the grid by 2024, happier after calmly leaving McLaren and taking a breather from F1 following a challenging couple of seasons, as he hopes for a comeback in a car that allows him to prove he's not the driver he seemed to be at McLaren. Yet, the 2023 Alpha Tauri doesn't seem to fit the bill. It has proved difficult to handle, particularly due to load under braking, making corner entry tricky, which is a situation that could expose Ricardo's weaknesses. But the Honey Badger is not eager to return to the grid at any cost, especially if it increases the likelihood of repeating his McLaren experience. Whether this opportunity interests him could depend on whether his main goal is to prove his abilities to Red Bull. If he's set on securing an F1 race seat again, particularly particularly within the Red Bull framework, he might see it as a necessary stepping stone with great potential. And then we have the whole reason why even Ricardo is in discussion for an Alpha Tower seat, the rookie Nick De Vries. De Vries has so far been consistently outperformed by third-year driver Yuki Tsunoda. The gap is even more evident in races, with De Vries' best finish being 12th, while Tsunoda has achieved two 10th places and three 11th places. Current Alpha Tauri team boss Franz Toast has defended De Vries, stating it's normal for rookies to make mistakes. However, other Red Bull managers, including Helmut Marko, are rumored to be less forgiving, potentially giving De Vries only a few more races to secure his seat. If Red Bull is considering replacing De Vries, this could be as much of an impulsive decision as it was to sign him initially. Despite being a Formula 2 and Formula E champion, De Vries wasn't on anyone's radar for an F1 drive before the last season. However, a series of unusual circumstances led to him securing the Alpha Tauri seat after an impressive F1 debut at the Italian Grand Prix, where he replaced Alex Albon at Williams on Saturday morning. De Vries' performance is often underestimated, as he took advantage of an excellent opportunity and made a compelling case for himself, leading Red Bull to choose him after failing to secure IndyCar race winner Colton Herta. However, it seemed as though Marco was highly swayed by one standout performance. Marco's history of honesty is well known, so while taking any second-hand information with a grain of skepticism is wise, it's likely that Marco accurately represents any internal discord over Red Bull's 2023 Alpha Tauri driver selection. He sided with De Vries, while Horner seemingly did not. Toast appeared to prefer a non-rookie or at least someone other than a traditional F1 rookie. This is evident in their interest in Schumacher and their enthusiasm for De Vries, who possesses substantial experience outside of F1. Marco's remark that currently Horner seems to have been correct in his reluctance to support De Vries is essentially an admission of his own misjudgment. 
While it would be an overstatement to say that Red Bull definitely regrets the final decision, there's still time for a turnaround. However, Marco concedes that De Vries hasn't lived up to expectations. De Vries, however, performed well and demonstrated he could be a competent F1 driver with significant career experience and reasonable F1 seat time, making him a reliable choice. Unfortunately, the emphasis on his impressive debut could now be turning against him if his performance doesn't improve soon. Regardless of what Red Bull initially expected from De Vries, they should afford him the chance to demonstrate his capabilities and if they do decide to replace him, it needs to be a more thoughtful decision. Ricardo on paper seems an obvious choice, offering a compelling narrative as the experienced race winner returning to his former team to reignite his career while challenging a promising young driver. I think that Red Bull stands to gain a great deal by offering Ricardo a short-term deal, at least from a marketing perspective. If successful, both Alpha Tauri and Red Bull benefit and it provides an opportunity to gauge Ricardo's abilities outside of McLaren. However, the risk is much higher for Ricardo, who could face career ending consequences if he struggles to adapt to the demanding Alpha Tauri and falls short against Yuki Tsunoda. While this scenario might not significantly elevate Tsunoda's profile, it would be detrimental to Ricardo's. Then we must also consider the talents awaiting from the back lines, Ayumu Iwasa and Liam Lawson. Iwasa has promised a lot in the Junior Formula Series and will be a great candidate for a seat in the Alpha Tauri, plus considering his age, it would be evident that a great deal of improvement can happen there, in comparison to Ricardo. Therefore, if Ricardo is to consider a return, it needs to be a carefully deliberated decision. Any failure might likely end his F1 career, while Red Bull simply moves on to the next driver. In fact, this potential replacement might already be ahead of Ricardo in the queue. The only reason Ricardo should top the list to replace De Vries is if Red Bull favors a short-term evaluation over offering their other reserve driver, Liam Lawson, a greater career opportunity. Lawson, a Formula 2 race winner who's currently competing in Super Formula in Japan and already proving to be an early title contender, has demonstrated potential and impressed with his F1 performances. If Lawson is genuinely considered by Red Bull and they want to keep him in contention, then, despite the appealing narrative of a Ricardo Alpha Tauri reunion, Lawson is a better long-term choice. Indeed, it was Red Bull's impulsive short-term decision and failure to trust in its youth that led them to deviate from their typical driver policy and recruit De Vries in the first place. Then we have the rumor about Ricardo potentially replacing Perez in Red Bull. But in this case, there are a lot of factors helping the Mexican rather than the Australian. Helmut has stated that Perez will see out his contract with the team and only then they might be looking for a successor. So, this confirms two things. The first is that the team does consider Ricardo a contender for a full-time drive, something it's been reluctant to say publicly given the limited scope of his current role. The second is that Perez is running out of time at the top despite his strong start to the year. But Ricardo replacing Perez would not be such a good idea in my opinion. Perez has proven that even at his worst, he's still a better driver than the Honey Badger and that Red Bull have a competent driver in him, despite the recent setbacks. While Perez may not be championship material, he's definitely the better one when compared to Daniel Ricciardo, who will have the added rustiness after not driving professionally for a year. We will see where Ricardo will end up, but things are not looking good for him, as first of all, there are younger drivers than him waiting in line for a driver's seat, and unlike the Australian, they will come to Formula 1 relieved of any pressure, which is not the case for Ricardo, having been in the sport for years. But one mitigating circumstance for Daniel is that Helmut is aware he made a mistake with signing De Vries based on the performance of one race alone, so that's why he might be holding himself back with signing either Lawson or Iwasa, leaving the door open for Daniel Ricciardo. Let us know your thoughts and opinions. Would you take Daniel Ricciardo if you were leading an F1 team? Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.